Uh, quick introduction, my name is Hunter. Uh, I teach here full time, take care of the kids program and also the fundamentals and advanced classes. I've been doing Nogi competitions now for like two years. Fought Freddy at the last Polaris, got smashed, it was nice. And I've been like hunting the submission only scene ever since. Uh, so I do a lot of leg locks and I want to show you today it's like it's just introduction to like leg lock defenses. It's gonna be super basic to begin with. And we're going to kick it up a notch and hopefully you get to pick up like one or two things. So as most, most of you know, like if you do submission only, it's, it's getting more and more into the dark ages. We're doing more and more leg locks and wrist locks and stuff, so it's getting nasty. You've got to be able to defend them. If you don't, you get left behind, so... So, uh, and we're also going to, we're also going to work on like Achilles le leg locks, which are legal for all white belts and in gi and everything. So, hopefully every can, everyone can pick up something. To begin with, we're just going to do a short drill where our opponent is going to be standing, and I'm going to be laying on my back, playing the lazy guard. And what Pjarki is going to do is he's, he's going to lace around my leg, catching it into like, sort of an Achilles position, getting ready to sit down and attacking my leg. And this is one of the most common like entries into the leg locks. He would grab it, he would come closer, he would sit down into an outside ashi, and he's ready to attack, right? So we're going to identify the problem immediately, and we're just going to do a small drill. He's going to start standing. All he's going to do, he's going to wrap, and as soon as he wraps, I'm going to place one foot on the floor and I'm going to be careful to place it on the outside of his legs. Okay, so I'm never going the inside. If I do it like this, I'm giving away the pass. So I go outside, I step, and all I do is I turn this knee towards the floor and my heel upside. So I go big shift and my heel comes out of the pocket and turns up to the ceiling. So he wraps the other leg, I plant, I scoot, and I make sure my heel goes to the outside. Now if he sits, my knee is in a position, so he can't really get a nice ashi. And I can easily just get out. So we go again, he wraps, I plant, he goes up. Wrap, he goes up. Uh, you can also, if you like, you can plant it on his hip. So he, he wraps, I go on his hip, and I turn. All I'm doing, turning the attacking leg, to, to, my knee goes down, he goes up. Just be careful, never overextend your, your motion. So never go like all the way here. Again, I'm giving away passing options. So I want to turn my hips towards my opponent the whole time, just slightly like this. Now I can start attacking myself. Make sense? So just a small warm up. One, two, two, four, or five each, and then switch, switch back, whatever you feel like comfortable with. Okay, let's go. No clapping. So far, so good. Okay, so that's basically level one of threat, threat assessment. Like immediately, like we defend immediate. He grabs, we react. Okay, but of course sometimes we can. Sometimes he goes deep, and whenever I try to turn, my heel just doesn't pop out, right? He's too deep and I can't do anything. So now I should be getting ready for him to step in and initiating the leg of the pass. And I know what he's gonna do. He's not gonna finish me from standing. It's almost, like, almost impossible. So now he's going to come down to the Ashi and start attacking from there. Boom. Whatever happens when he drops, he creates a lot of momentum, right? He's dropping with his back, creating a big swing, and he creates momentum in his body, which I'm going to use to try to come up. So he wraps, he goes deep, and now his next step is going to come down. If you're wearing the key, try to make a connection, grab the key. If not, I like to go for the arm or the leg. Just something to help, help him pull me up. So my other leg, my free leg, is now going to create a pendulum moment. So I see him going in, I create a pendulum, go up, and I put weight on my front leg. Okay, so now I'm, I'm pretty safe with the leg locks. However, by putting all my weight on my front leg, I'm exposing myself both to the single legs and the, the X guard. And I'm making it pretty easy for him to sweep me over. So that's going to be my next, like, my next threat assessment is going to be defending the, the immediate X guard. So my arms go immediately on his legs, and I try to find both of them. From there, we have two attacking options to pass the guard. Number one, being the back step, really good. So I can just push down, back step, go in. I try to keep low, boom, 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 go in, and pass. Or secondly, we go, he wraps, I pendulum, I come up, put weight, and I push this down and go immediately for the moment. Just, just immediately think about defending both the X guard and the single leg X because we're making ourselves really vulnerable by putting all our weight on our front leg. 
However, by doing that, we're completely safe from all leg locks. If you try to finish from there with an Achilles or whatever, he can't do it. He needs my hip on the floor. And in order to do that, he needs to either sweep me with the axe or the single axe. So I'm just going to immediately go on his legs, push them down, heels to his butt. From there, either A, push his knee through to the back step. Or B, he tries to go for the axe guard, and I push this through, and come through for the mount. Or you can get creative. Sometimes something completely else happens, but we're just pushing down on his legs and getting creative from there, trying to pass the guard from there. So play around with it. Like the, the person on bottom, go for some weird ass sweeps, try something new, have fun. Person on top, just float, keep the weight on, go through, try to pass, do something creative. Have fun. So, number one, we start here. He, he manages to go deep and I can't get out. So I, I know what gonna, his next step is. He's gonna go down, so I create time for him. Boom. I come up, put all my weight on my front leg, and immediately attack his legs. Keep him off the single legs. If he manages to go into single legs, go, go forward, push your knee out, push the toes down, and then start clearing the legs, sort of pass. But just have fun, just do whatever feels right. Okay, if it works, it works. That's basically how it goes. So let's let's get creative, let's have fun with it. Just step one, he, he goes all the way through, we come up, put the weight on the front leg, and start attacking the legs and try to get the pass. Okay. Cool, let's continue then. Okay, so sometimes we're in this position, we're against somebody who's really fast or knows what he's doing. He steps in deep and boom, and he goes all the way down. Or we just ended up in outside us somehow. Doesn't matter. So now we just have to get out, right? And, and first thing we have to do is always like assess, assess what the threat is. Is he attacking the Achilles lock or is he going for the heel? If you're competing at like uh, early stages or in the key, this, this is going to be a way easier because you can't go for the heel, right? So we're only afraid of the Achilles. Uh, the reason why we're always like, we assess, like, try to assess uh, which one he's, uh, he's attacking is because my counter to the Achilles opens up the heel hook. And my counter for the heel hook opens up the Achilles lock. So if my opponent is really good at switching between those two, I have to be, I have to be aware and, and always like on, on the alert. So my legs can never be lazy, okay? So first off, if my opponent has his arms wrapped around my leg, I can be, I can be pretty safe that he's gonna attack the Achilles. And, and, and both, both attacks work the same way. He's trying to like hyperextend something. For the Achilles, he's trying to hyperextend my ankle. So if, if an opponent, for example, goes too high and he's attacking your calf, I know it, it can hurt like hell, but usually he's not gonna do any damage. It's not until like you feel your Achilles being like, sorry, your ankle being like stretched and hyperextended that you're, you're in trouble. So my first counter to the Achilles is all, always just making a 90 degree angle. Just making my, my, my foot into like an L shape. Pointing my toes upwards and doing it like this. But that of course exposes the heel, right? So now if he goes through, boom, he has a perfect catch for the heel. So I have to be careful. However, for the heel hook, I like to do the ballerina toes. But by doing the ballerina toes, I'm hyperextending my ankle myself, right? So the only thing he would need to do now is just wrap him and he's got it. So we always have to be thinking like, which one is he attacking? As soon as I feel his arms getting loose, I always switch to the ballerina toes, if that makes sense. So I'm always keeping aware, like 90 degrees, ballerina toes, boom, back and forth. Okay, uh, like I said, both things work the same way mechanically. He's trying to hyperextend something. And by hyperextending, he needs to take his body as far away from me as possible and put all his body weight into it. He's trying to make his back straight, it's sort of like doing a deadlift, like he's going all the way in. So my first counter is always coming in as close as possible and trying to connect to something. For Noki, I like to go for the upper arm. I like to take my far arm, reach through and hook and keep him as close to me as possible. Now if you go for a full on Achilles lock, it's going to be super hard for him. Unless he's like frequently strong, he's never going to be able to put all his body into it, if that makes sense. Even better would be the head. 
because we can cradle them like this. And if he tries to finish either the Achilles or the heel now, it's going to be almost impossible. So my first, my first objective is trying to get as close to him as possible, make a connection and pull him in. If you're wearing the key, the collar is an ex excellent weapon to attack for. Pull it in and attach. Keep, keep as close as possible. Then I would like to go for the head if possible, pull him in, and now I'm, I'm pretty safe to go and try to get out of the lock. If I just start immediately trying to escape and go out by pushing my body further away, he's just gonna get a free, free like highway to attack my, my heel and I'm gonna be tapping out. If he's good at holding the position. So first thing as always, like be safe. So L shape if he's attacking Achilles, if he's attacking the heel hook, uh, ballerina toes. Hide your heel. So my toes, as you can see, I'm, I'm pushing them towards him, making my ballerina, and it's gonna be super hard for him to find the heel. Okay? Object two, get as close as possible and make, make a connection. Either through the arm, or if you can, reach for the head. It's gonna, it's gonna suck when you grab the head. Pull in as tight as close as possible, and when you feel safe, and only when you feel safe, then we're gonna get out. And what I'm gonna do, first of all, like, the thing that's holding us close, closed in, is his legs. So we have to get out of them. My first objective is always gonna be the bottom leg. Because this one is gonna be really hard to get rid of. So what I do, I put all my weight into this arm. I grab his toes, always the toes. So he should be hiding it, but sometimes they leave it out, and if so, it's beautiful. If not, find the toes, push on them, put all your weight on it. Sit over it, and as soon as we sit over it, I'm gonna switch this arm. It's gonna come through and go on the inside of the knee. And the reason why we do this, if I leave it close, and I'm like just like this, he's gonna thread this knee through and he's gonna go belly down. And I'll take it up. So like this. Now we're in even more trouble. So pull in as close as possible, I put all my weight on, I sit. I go through, push on the inside, and I go all the way out. If you like, as soon as we get out, you can even start threading the knee yourself and start attacking immediately. Or we can just be safe and we'll be able to make the L shape, I pull in, I get out, pop over, thread on the inside of the knee, go and start attacking the muscle position. So there's multiple attack options. We can go straight away on the offense, or we can just be super defensive and just get the hell out of there. So we're here, L shape if he's attacking the Achilles. As soon as I feel him open in his arms, ballerina toes. As soon as he threads again, Achilles. Make sense? So we're always changing back and forth. Connect either to the arm or the head. Go on the leg, sit on it. As soon as we sit, thread, push. And always a straight arm. If I'm like this and he just bulldozes through, I'm not gonna be able to keep him. If I'm like this and he tries to do the same thing, he's stuck. And even if he attacks now, there's gonna be nothing behind it. Thread my leg through. I got two options now. Either I can thread through and start attacking myself, or uh, we can go to the monk position, or we can just be safe, kick him, and get away. So, one more time, we got caught on the outside. Actually, it didn't matter. Either he caught it like way deep, or we just found ourselves here somehow. Connect, pull him close, head, push, sit, through, lace, and we can start attacking. Mount, or kick him and get away. Be sneaky, kick him in the balls, always. <laughs> okay, if the referee doesn't see it, it's fine. Uh, makes sense. Okay, let's try it. Any questions so far? Are we all good? Yeah. Yeah. Can you give more tips on opening the knee? Yeah, so one thing like that I saw a lot of people were having issues with, I'm, I'm not entirely trying to open the knee up. I'm, I'm more doing I'm more doing the opening with my hips and I'm keeping it away. It's like a frame. It's, it's like in side control, we're not pushing the person away, we're just keeping our frames and then moving away from our frames, if that makes sense. So as I go, so I made a connection. Uh, get him in the middle. Sorry, we'll do this side. Sorry, it's my bad side. So, so no judging. So connection, go over. I hop, and as you can see, his knee is gonna stay pretty much here the whole time. As I lay through, 
And a lot of people are doing this. And if I try to muscle him out, and he's, he's still uh, held about tension, he keeps tension, I'm trying to muscle out, it's not gonna make any sense. So what I do is I turn my palm on the inside. So I go like this, I turn on the inside, and I move away from my frame. So immediately as I go, I'm here, I switch, and I make an angle of my body so that I can turn my elbow to the inside. Now I have a strong frame. So this is a weak frame. Here I'm using muscle, right? And he's, he's strong, I can't open him, no way. So I switch, go on the inside, and now I move away from that frame. He tries to follow, it's not gonna make any sense for him. Because this is a super strong, he's going against a straight arm. I'm always trying to create that. Uh, another thing, uh, lazy limbs and like lazy arms, lazy legs, is always gonna be dangerous. So even though we're out, even though like I'm here, and if I just sit here and I'm lazy, I'm still in trouble, I'm still in the danger zone. All he has to do now is like lace this leg through, and he's got another attack on the opposite leg, right? So I gotta be aware at all times. When I go out, first thing I do, like I connect, I go over, I go in, and I see how far away I go. I push my butt really as far as I can, and I keep a straight arm. So now if he tries to lace, it's not gonna make any sense for him. Immediately, if you wanna attack the mount, now, in this case, I'm gonna switch to the outside, I'm gonna push him down, and my hips are gonna come up, and I have the mount position. Because if I still have that strong frame, it's not helping me get the mount position. So I switch, and it's even better in gi, where I can grab on top of the knee, and push it through my legs, and then come up. Make sense? So, so far so good. Okay, so we're gonna go into more trouble now. We'll go even deeper down the rabbit hole, into the honey hole. This position here that everyone is, everyone is aware of, everyone's been here, and it sucks at all times, it's really shitty. And there's no magic trick, but I'm gonna show you a few tips that I like to think about how to get out of this position. First thing, like, like before, is just not get submitted. Like, always hide your heels. It's always gonna be my first objective. If I just try to get out immediately, I'm gonna have issues. He's gonna catch my heel, I'm gonna be off guard. So first thing is always hide in the heel. What I do is first thing, when I get caught in this position, I always turn my knee away from my opponent, always. So my kneecap should be in, in, his, in his groin. If it's the opposite, he has a super, super strong and good, good attack on my knee. So turn it away, and then I go heel, and I dig it into his hip. Just dig, just kick him in and dig. Don't kick him, but, but dig in. From there, I push on the knee, usually on the, on the bottom knee, and I start turning my body away from him. If he tries to attack now, it's gonna be super hard for him, even to attack the Achilles. So this is usually keeping me tight. So if I just try to do the running man, try to run away, I'm gonna open my knee up, I'm gonna open my heel, and he's gonna catch me, because I can't get this leg through. And as most of you know, like 80% of our escapes come from our free leg, not the one that's being caught. So I need to get this one free. So I push down, I get this one out, and I turn away. From here, as I have it, have it open, I'm gonna go in. If you wanna be dirty, we go toes, ballerina toes, inside the bum, and kick up. <laughs> if you wanna be nice, just give your partner just a small, small kick. So heel to, uh, knee turns away, heel digs, push the bottom leg, and we go over. So lift our butt. So, frame number one, frame number two, so now we're light, we can move. I go over, and I lace through, and I start turning my knee into the opposite direction of my opponent. Never add it. From there, there's multiple ways to get out, I'm just gonna use the most basic one, which is the running man. I'm gonna make ballerina toes, ballerina toes, either inside the bottom, with dirty players, or here, kick, lace through, and start off. So we got caught in the honey hole, immediately we turn, we hide our heel, we push on the bottom leg, and we get this leg out. If this leg is already out, we can start pushing on the top leg. It's fine. So push on the bottom, lace through, come inside, kick, and run away. And then start attacking. Makes sense. Okay, so just remember to always immediately, as soon as you get caught here, do a quick turn with your hips and everything, hide your heel, dig it in, push the bottom leg, we need this leg like, to be free. If it's already free, feel free to push on this. Just make your arms so heavy that you put all your weight on, and you can move everything else pretty lightly. Move out, kick, and get out. Okay, let's do that for a short time, and then we're gonna do one bonus, bonus move. Okay, let's go.
any questions so far? Are we are we moving too quickly? Is everyone aware of what the honey hole is and what it does? If, if somebody's not aware, please raise your hand. And yeah. Yeah. Sorry? About the honey hole. It's, yeah. it's probably one of the most like uh, common leg lock attacking positions because what it, what it does, it aligns his knee perfectly to my hips. And the only thing I would need to do is catch his heel and then just slightly push my hip forward to get a devastating heel hook. The only thing, like, as well, is it exposes his heel in a perfect position for me. As you can see, he turns his heel upwards, and the only thing I need to do is lay down, catch and wrap, and then I just have to slightly arch backwards, and the uh, hip goes forward, and I have a devastating lock. So, whenever you feel you end up in this position, you're wrapped, if we turn our knee towards our opponent, we're in, we're in trouble. So that's why we always turn away and hide the heel. As you can see, the difference between this and this. As the heel is exposed, it's super easy for me to catch, lay back, and just slide the hip forward. So this is probably one of the most common positions, and it also transitions into something called like double trouble, where we pull in and we go all the way through, or 4-11, or whatever you like to call it. But by, by being able to always keep your knees turning outside, we, we eliminate the options of both. So as soon as you, you get caught here, and it, it will happen, just, just remember to push your knees to the outside, turn your, your body and your hips away, push down on the leg and then get out as soon as possible. Uh, one thing, with when we're doing this motion, we're here and we're here. If, if I turn and I get all the way out, but I keep my knee uh, attached to the floor, I'm still in trouble. If he catches my heel now and hips in, he can still finish the heel hook. So I didn't talk about this earlier, I don't know why, I'm sorry, but I, this is something that I always do. I lift, I put all my weight on my, my arms, it makes my hip more mobile. I turn it away and immediately I'm trying to turn my knee and get it out of the pocket. Or just just keep it elevated. My opponent, what he wants, he wants, he wants me to touch solid floor. What I want is to be elevated at all times. Push backwards, sit back, just backwards a little bit and try to get the knee out. It makes it easier for me to do the kick and get away. For more advanced people, you can start turning it into attacking options. Uh, so far, so good. Cool, we're gonna do one bonus, which is a move that I like to do. And I did a whole class about this last year. It's called, well, I, I call it the pretzel. It might be called something entirely different. But if somebody asks, it's called the pretzel, okay? <laughs> so what it is, we're gonna turn this position, which is probably one of the worst positions to end up in. He feels comfortable, he's got all the attacking options. And I'm gonna turn it into one of my favorite attacks, which is gonna be completely awful for him. And all it is, firstly, we're gonna do the same thing. I turn away, I push down, and I start escaping. But instead of lazing through and getting my knee out, I'm gonna keep the position. So, let's, let's, let's just do an example. We're here, I turn away, I get my leg through, and it has to go over his bottom leg. As soon as it's over, I'm gonna make ballerina toes, I'm gonna to dig him underneath, grab his ankle and his knee, and I'm gonna pull through and lace it like this. Now I'm gonna lay back, Place his leg over, and now we have the pretzel. So now if Bjarke tries to get out, there's, there's, there's very limited like escaping options for him. Uh, he, I'm still in danger, right? My, my heel is still exposed. But I, what I have, what he doesn't have, is I have my two legs together. If you can see his heel, it's completely unprotected and exposed. So the only thing I need to do now is lay on it, wrap it, grab a gable grip, slowly hip in and arch my back backwards. And we have a devastating knee hook. Uh, let's do it, uh, can we hang on down? Do it the other side so you can see it better. So he's got me in the honey hole position, I turn my knees away, I push down on his bottom leg, I lace through, I make ballerina toes, and I dig it into the pocket. There's always gonna be a small pocket underneath his kneecap. Dig your toes in, grab the ankle, and grab the knee. Because what I don't want, I don't want to be forcing or like pulling, I want a combination of me pulling and me extending. Then I fall backwards, I go on top of the toes with both arms and I push them down and sit back up. Uh, if you have a lot of body fat, it's gonna be way better for you because now I can just like put my body all in. If you're lean, you gotta be careful to always like keep it tight. Lay on the leg, wrap it, slowly arch backwards and hip goes in. And we got the finish. So we turn one of the like worst positions ever into a 
devastating position for him, which is which is an amazing feeling. You want to see it one more time, or ready to go? Honey hole, turn your knees away, push, go ballerina toe, go underneath his leg, over the other, push, grab, kick. Uh, I like to go into triangle, you don't have to, just keep it tight. Lay back, sit up, and keep your body arched over it. If we're like this, he's gonna push out of the both of his legs and it's gonna be tough. So I wanna keep this bend, the 90 degree bend on his knee the whole time. Catch the heel, slowly arch backwards, and hip in. Uh, one more thing, if the opponent is really good at hiding the heel and I can't find it, what I like to do is go both arms inside the kneecap and pull it out like this. And it exposes the heel. So I go, I go in, I pull my elbow down, and as you can see, it elevates his, his, his heel up to the ceiling, and I grab and arch backwards. Let's give that a try for like five minutes, and then we wrap it up. Let's go. Uh, yeah, so we're out of time. So that's, that's basically all I wanted to show today. Uh, did we have any issues, any questions, or any troubles with anything? Okay, so if, if there's anything, anything you can, you can figure out or, or comes to mind, please just grab me any time of the week and we'll, we'll have a chat about it. I, I always like to show things that I'm maybe, uh, I'm still exploring with and having fun with, and I like to get like criticized and, and po people pointing out things so I can add it to my collection and kind of get better with it as myself. So that's why I picked this topic today. Because uh, it's, all, it's all still fresh and, and it's still evolving. So if you can if you can debunk something, please come and let me know. And if you catch catch this in the week, I'll buy you a beer. Okay, but you have to have a video, <laughs> video proof. But uh, if there's nothing else, then just welcome to the gym. I hope you have an amazing week. And if we can get a picture, then that'll be that'll be great. Thank you for the class. Yeah.